This question has a nice little trap answer. It's the hardest one in the section, right? 22 out of 22, so in theory it's the hardest. Um, and there's gonna be some traps near the end, uh, but this one's kind of sneaky. Um, maybe you kind of know how this uh, equation works even. This is a circle equation. It, it does have a predictable formula. Uh, X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared is equal to R squared. So if we lined up what we're given, uh, we have some pieces missing and some pieces changed, but it basically follows the circle formula. So our circle that they gave us, it has a radius of six, right? Because six squared would be 36. So the R, the squared is kind of built into it. We don't see it for the radius, but it's there. And then HK represent the center of the circle. So the fact that the X kind of doesn't have anything with it means that the X coordinate of the center is zero. And then the Y coordinate is two, positive two. And we gotta be careful here because you're, you're really tempted to say it's negative two, but it's not, it's positive two because the negative is kind of built into the equation. So the reason that that matters is if we go down four units, you have to think, okay, if we are starting at two and we go down four, we're gonna end at negative two. So down is only gonna shift the, the Y, so the X part's not gonna change. So that's why C and D don't make sense. But the, the, the trap answer is definitely B because your brain goes, oh, negative two minus four is negative six. But no, it, it's positive two is the center and that's moving down to negative two. And so uh, when we write that new version, because the negative is kind of built in to the actual kind of like generic form of the equation, when we do the negative of the negative two, it's gonna look positive in the new equation. So A is the answer here, it's very sneaky. It's, it's not hard, if you understand how to read a circle equation, this is actually really easy. But I think many people don't know how to do that, so that's one problem. But two, it's just, it's so tempting to kind of skip the math and just think about it logically. But it's, it's so often true on lots of SAT math questions. Just because something is logical does not mean that it is true, right? It is logical that if we moved down four units, negative two would become negative six. That feels good, but it's wrong, as we just saw. Now, regardless, if, if you're on number 22 in any of the math sections, you should be nervous and kind of thinking about traps and, and just be aware that they exist and that even if you feel really good about what you're doing, you might be falling into a trap without realizing it. Um, one thing we could do if we have a couple extra seconds is we could, you know, graph what we think the answer is. So in this case, uh, let's pretend I'm kind of like rushing a little bit. I would graph the original equation and then I would maybe graph what my, my hunch would be. So choice B is probably my, my hunch. So we're going to graph that. Let's just do X squared um, plus parentheses Y minus six squared is equal to 36. So pay attention, look at the green is my original and my purple is choice B. But notice what happened, the purple is above the green, right? It moved up. So that's now proof that this is not right. It's supposed to move down four units. So if you thought you know, that, that B was gonna be right, a simple typing it into the Desmos calculator can just show you the trap without having to think about the actual math. You just see it happen and see it go wrong. Then you might be like, okay, well, I don't know, let's try some of the other choices. The easiest one to try without changing anything is choice A, so now let's make that plus two. And now you can see, yes, the green is here, the purple is lower, so they've moved it down. You can even count the four, right? You can kind of see that the, the top coordinate of the purple is zero, four, and the top coordinate of the green, if I can get all that in there, is eight, right? So you can see the four, right? It went from eight to four. You can see that point actually move. I don't, I don't know if you can do the centers on the circles, no. So you gotta stick to a point on the side, but there you go. It's still nice and visual and kind of foolproof. So if you long as you enter everything right, you're, you should be good. So if you wanted to go this route from the start and just graph these things, because maybe you, you're not certain about the circle formula or you just don't trust yourself, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. This is great because the, the, the algebra requires confidence and it requires you to just kind of like, almost like not believe your eyes. And that can be difficult, especially when you're tired and this is the last question of the entire test. But the graphing, 
just it, it either moved up or it moved down. That's about as easy as it has to be. You just need to see the direction that the circle is moving. And so you can get these very, very difficult points on this section just by typing things in a calculator and watching a circle move. It's beautiful.